We're going to have uh, Tara Quinn share. She's with Health Crisis Pregnancy Center, the wonderful director there. They do a lot for the issue of abortion to save babies' lives and to help women. She's going to share a little bit of her testimony uh, with us now. Good morning. Good morning. I hope, hope you can hear me. If my kids were here, they'd tell you my, their mom's got a big mouth. So I hope it carries to both ends of, of you out here. First of all, I want to thank you. I'm amazed by how many people showed up today. And I want to tell you that when you show up, you make a difference. You cannot just come today and then not come again. You have to show up and show up and show up because these women show up at abortion clinics every day. So I challenge you, you have to show up. I want to tell you a brief story. It's my story. A church girl, a girl that knew Jesus, but I didn't know he wanted all of me. I didn't know that there was more than just Sunday, but I had a heart for God. I got pregnant as a teenage girl. I was engaged to the father. I walked in a Planned Parenthood in Charlotte, North Carolina, 35 years ago. And then they killed babies on demand every day, but nobody was out there. I was asking questions, but I was not asking the right people. I asked the people inside one of these doors, and I can tell you that all they want is our money. That's all they want. There are no free abortions. None of them are free. They will tell you in there, you need to go ahead and get your abortion because the further along you get, the more expensive that abortion will be. So you need to go ahead and get that done. And then they even tell you how to be creative. They tell you you can go ask your group of friends for $20 and $25, and if you ask enough, they'll help you pay for it. And what they tell you inside of abortion clinics is that the baby is the problem. My baby was never my problem. I was my baby's problem. The father of that child was that baby's problem. God's word is clear. Children are a blessing, period. There's nothing else that God adds to that. He didn't say if I had been older. He didn't say if I had been married. He didn't say if I was going to have them in the right school zone. He didn't say any of that. He says, and he still says it, children are a blessing i didn't know that i lost a child by default i always wanted to be a mom i just didn't want to be a teenage mom i was scared and they convinced me that being a teenager and a mother was just horrible and what they didn't tell me was that i would always be a mother i just was gonna have a dead baby and they made it sound like because I was young, that was a crime. And if you'll look at me, I'm not young anymore, but I'm still a mother. And I didn't understand that. My life is one of restoration. It is one that God forgives and he heals. I am humbled that God would allow me to stand here on this property today and be able to bow my knee and worship earlier because of what Planned Parenthood represented in my life, the death of my firstborn. I went on to have two natural children. They're 31 and 27. We have adopted child. We have foster kids that became our children. I love nothing more than being a mother. You just ask my kids, if I'm not working with the Lord, doing what He wants, they're the next people I want to be with. They're grown, they're out of my home, but they're still my world. I'm a grandmother now. I have, have I told you that I have awesome grandchildren? I realized this morning when I was walking and praying, God had intended more grandchildren for my family. 
but because I didn't allow my firstborn to live, that child's life was snuffed out on this earth. Abortion destroys women. Yes. We walk out yes. of these clinics and we're never the same. That's right. For 10 years, I walked in brokenness, hurt. I walked in anger. I walked in fear. When I had my firstborn child, I was so afraid and I didn't understand God's love. I could not, I did not understand who he truly was and I walked in fear. I was afraid God was gonna kill my innocent baby to get back at me. That's who I thought God was. But redemption came in my life, releasing forgiveness for myself. I knew that God had forgiven me, but I didn't know how to forgive myself. And that's where these women get stuck. It's an ugly, ugly sin, so much shame, so much guilt goes with this sin, and we don't talk about it. And we certainly don't want to tell pastors. We don't want to tell people. We don't want to be judged. We are just live in fear as these women. Many times we become angry. The relationships with those men rarely last because there's so much pain between the people. But I'm here to tell you that God does forgive, that God does heal. I'm here to tell you that God has a plan for these children. I'm here to tell you to keep showing up. Please keep showing up. If somebody would have shown me a, pictures, there's so much controversy about these graphic pictures. And I know they're hard to look at, but what I can tell you is, I was asking my counselor inside of a Planned Parenthood, isn't this a life? And they said, will you define life? I was 16. I didn't have the answer, because if I did, I wouldn't have been inside the clinic. I always wanted to be a mom. I was just very, very scared. So the pictures are necessary sometimes, and that's unfortunate, but it's a graphic, graphic image and culture that we live in, and we have to show the ladies the truth of what happens in these clinics. I can tell you, my oldest granddaughter's five, my youngest, my oldest grandson's four. I take them to the abortion clinics, and just real recently, my little granddaughter looked and noticed one of the, the pictures, the aborted pictures, and I watched her and I saw her, and I just stopped when I was talking to people, and I walked over to Alexis and I bent down and she was looking at that picture, and I said, Alexis, she, I could tell there were questions, and I was like, Lord, help me. And I said, Alexis, there are people inside that building that do very, very bad things, and there are mommies and daddies that don't want their babies. And then we walked away from it. And you know what? She went home and slept fine that night. She didn't have any problems. We don't give our children enough credit for teaching them and training them up in God's ways when they're little. So thank you for bringing your children out here today, your little ones. Thank you for bringing friends and wives. And I just want to pray. Father, I thank you that you allow me today to come full circle. Something in my heart I didn't even know was needing, but Lord, redeeming, redeeming ground, Lord, that's what we're asking for in this town. We are asking, Lord, that you shut these places down by your spirit, that you take the funding away, that scales come off of the eyes of people, but most of all, that your church will rise up and go against the gates of hell in the name of